This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. There are elections to five states coming up for uh, UP and Punjab, of course, the most important of them. This is going to be a key test for the government. But before that, in fact, just before those elections kick off, there is another key test that, of course, being the budget. As we look at what various sectors are expecting, let's just also keep our eye firmly on what entrepreneurs want. And that's what we're looking at over the next half an hour. Let me introduce my very special panel of guests that we have for you today. Ritu Parna Chakravarti, co-founder and executive vice president of Team Lee. He's one of the India's leading staffing companies. Albin Dinsa, co-founder of Grofers, an uh, on-demand online grocery delivery service. Nitin Saluja, founder at Chaios, a chai cafe chain. Uh, Utkarsh Biradar, vice president of uh, product shop clues, an online shopping portal. And of course, Minal Sinha, chief operating officer of MobiQuick, a mobile wallet and online payment uh, system. So let's get started right away. Rituparna, exactly a year ago, there was one day the government had, in fact, led by the Prime Minister, devoted to entrepreneurship in the country. But 2016 perhaps didn't turn out the way that India's entrepreneurs or startups had imagined. What is the one big ticket thing, if I could ask you, that you would expect from the government to change the story as it were this year? I kind of uh, label last year's budget as the Goldilocks budget. Uh, just right, not too warm, not too hot, not too cold. Uh, I think there was a lot of promising commitments uh, made during that budget. Um, I think one of the most important things that the government needs to focus on is that while the fiscal dole-outs have been given, I don't think that those dole-outs or those incentives or those schemes and benefits are actually reaching out to the people who actually require them. Uh, there is a challenge in terms of communication, awareness, and access. Until and unless the government actually focuses on these, uh, mm. these announcement, announcements merely are not going to help. Alpita, you know, as, as someone uh, you know, who's in the online grocery delivery service, you've had a bumpy 2016. More in the headlines for the wrong reasons than the right ones, which is very different from 2015. What do you believe the government can do for players like yourself in this space? to sort of make this year different? I think uh, the government can't do much mm -hmm. for our businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have to sort of figure our own way through it. Uh, broadly, what we do expect is that over time, the government will make sure that we are on a level playing ground mm -hmm. when it comes the difference between the online and the offline. Mm -hmm. uh, as more organized online players, you know, we are still, we still have to comply with a lot of the regulations, mm -hmm. uh, which the offline guys are also supposed to comply with, but they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that creates sort of, uh, I mean, that sort of defeats the purpose of a lot of initiatives that the government has recently also taken, including note span. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can't stop the, you know, the, uh, the smaller uh, traders, the merchants from actually going back to their old ways where they dodge indirect taxes, they mm -hmm. don't pay income taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, that really skews the battlefield away from the startups to overcome that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think, I mean, we don't expect the government to come and help us and, mm -hmm. uh, and help us figure out our own businesses. I think we'll have to do that on our own. That's actually quite interesting because it comes in the backdrop of two of our biggest uh, startups talking about the need for the government to step in, Nitin, and sort of do something more for them. We've heard from Flipkart and Ola talk about, in a sense, about protectionism. Before we move on on this, how do you see that demand and that debate? I don't think, I don't think... Uh Ola and Flipkart need that kind of protectionism as as uh, as has been put forth by them. Uh, I I think the more the more the competition, the better we all get, the better it is for the country, and and we've got to be on our feet, and that's how we've got to fight. Mm. Uh, right. Not 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 a big one on that. Right. right. Minal, would you agree? Um, <clears throat> yes and no. So you know, I I don't think we need protectionism. But I think the point that some of them, uh, some of these founders are trying to make is that um, 
if you take a, a, a startup which is in the US mm -hmm. uh, and trying to compete in India versus another startup which is in India, mm -hmm. or similarly, you know, if you compare India versus China, mm -hmm. you know, th there is a difference in the level playing field because access to capital is easier in the US and easier in China. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so long as you tackle that difference, mm -hmm. right, we're fine, don't need protectionism. Mm -hmm. But at least, uh, you know, I think... Uh, but is the uh, battle increasingly becoming only about who has deeper pockets? It's not only about who has deep, deeper pockets, it's, you know, risk capital uh, across the world mm -hmm. has fueled innovation, right? That's mm -hmm. true, uh, you know, n uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's the reason, you know, Silicon Valley exists. Mm -hmm. Uh, and cap therefore, you know, it, capital is a very important part of mm -hmm. enabling entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And if a risk capital has to become av uh, available, mm -hmm. n no, I'm, I'm talking not just about one or two com companies, but in general mm -hmm. to the Indian ecosystem. Risk mm -hmm. capital from India mm -hmm. has to become available to the Indian ecosystem. Mm -hmm. and the reason, is, you know, if you, if you think about the internet, uh, in, in about eight years from now, internet g uh, contribution to the GDP from the internet will be higher than infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And in the light of that, I think some of India's biggest institutions, mm -hmm. some of the big, biggest capital holders have to come behind the internet ecosystem in a substantive way, the way the Chinese pension fund is done. Mm -hmm. Given all this, Utkarsh, what can the government do? Are there more, uh, more serious expectations from the government on how they can do to level the playing field? Whether the point that Alvinder makes between online and offline players, or the point that is being made about risk capital? So yes, yeah, so I think that... Uh, how much do we seriously expect them to do? I mean, it's okay to have a never-ending wish list, but... No, not too many expectations for sure, not too many expectations. And part of being an entrepreneur is, of course, you know, being able to fight your own battles. And um, yes, level playing field, like, like Mrinal is saying, that um, availability of risk capital, the government can do a lot in terms of, you know, making the capital available. Both, I mean, uh, just from the point of view that if India is easier to do business with, mm -hmm you will see a lot more risk capital coming in, mm. as simple as that. Mm. Um, <coughs> if you think that internet is, is you know, is the next next thing and it's um, s simple things like accelerating the growth of internet to tier sure. two, tier three, tier four. Sure. And that's infrastructure and that's pretty much government. And that's so I think these are a couple of things we can... And that's not going to be imperative because how do you go cashless? How do you move to a digital economy if yes. you don't do that? But uh, Nitin, coming back to you, is there anything that you're expecting to hear in the finance minister's speech that, that, that you sort of, or will you be looking out to hear for yourself, for your business, for entrepreneurs like yourself? What, is there anything that you expect? Is there anything that you're hoping for? Uh, po post the monetization, what I would what I would be delighted to see is all the measures that just boost boost some spending. Mm -hmm. uh, offline businesses have been have been slightly hit by mm -hmm. demonetization. Just slightly. 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 Yes, okay. I would I would very very rightly use the word slightly, mm -hmm. and and I would I would be delighted to see all those measures that just boost spending going mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Alvinda, you've gone on record to say that actually post uh, the note ban, you've seen a bump up in, in business. I mean, yes. we've also now hearing some of those e-commerce players saying that people have been using their cards a lot more. Moby Quick's talking about all those new millions of users that are now coming on, on, on board. But I'm sure that there are serious challenges that still remain as well, going beyond the big cities, tier two, tier three, and so on. Uh, those are more structural challenges mm. that are not startup specific either, mm -hmm. right? We do, uh, we see a lot of issues when we go and open in tier two, tier three, even if we are doing infrastructure investments, mm. getting the right labor force, mm. you know, mm. uh, meeting sort of the right wage expectations. Mm. Uh, all those are issues that I think are more structural. Uh, Ritu Panda, you know, one thing that people are going to be looking at the budget is, is of course, how we're going to stimulate growth, also job creation. Now, we know the jobs have been under pressure. People like yourselves are sort of working so closely uh, in this space. What are you looking for? What are the kind of signals? What are the kind of hints that you're looking for as far as jobs are concerned? Because that's now becoming quite worrying. So I have a three by three thing ask list, honestly, and non-fiscal in nature. Uh, the three things that we need to do uh, to actually uh, boost formal employment generation. One, I think the finance minister in 2015 did allude to a little bit that uh, PF and ESIs in India have hostages and not clients. And hence, we need to give the choice of structuring of the wages, especially to low-income war workers, mm -hmm. around how they would like their wages to be structured, essentially give them choice around whether they would want to contribute their uh, contribution of the PF, whether they want it to be actually put in EPF or in uh, NPS, 
or whether they would like to contribute their share of the SIC or just opt for some um, IRDA, you know, uh, sponsored scheme. Similarly, uh, you know, the organizations today, I mean, you'll be fascinated, every employer, and this is particularly relevant if you were to create jobs, uh, formal jobs, mm -hmm. uh, through actually having a lot more entrepreneurs coming into in, in India or setting shop in India. Any regular mid-sized businesses need to procure 25 plus different identity numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, the identity numbers could be five digit to as high as 21 digits. Wow. I mean, things like Shram Pehchan Sankhya, ESIC mm -hmm. number, labor establishment number, TAN, PIN, service, PAN number, it's service endless, tax right. numbers. I think these create bottlenecks mm -hmm. for organizations to set shop. If we can have only one, which is PAN, and go with that. Um, also, we need to focus on paperless, cashless, and uh, presenceless. Uh, all labor law compliances need to be made online. And honestly, this is far from that. At the moment, organizations annually have to cut down 6 lakh trees just to do wow. paper compliances. Just not wow. working. It's absolutely critical that we need to convert skills and degrees. And until and unless that's allowed, it's not, we won't be able to expand the skill, uh, expand sure. the skill, I mean, the skill challenge, the skill pool at this point of time. Sure, you make two uh, important to points. I just interrupt you there, Rituparna, just, just one moment. I just let sure. me get my panel in here. Uh, you know, the, the point, we've now gone blue in the face, it seems to me, in, in recent years especially, talking about the ease of doing business or the lack of it. When the ratings come out, we say, oh my God, we barely moved two places from 132 to 130. Look at these countries ahead of us. These countries shouldn't be there. And there's much hand wringing and chest beating around this. But there are a lot of people out there, people like yourself, who perhaps feel that the more things change, there's little or no sign of it. The points that Ritu Panna has made about just how challenging it can be. It's almost a cliche to say, you know, you can set up a business in India, but folding it up then is, is another challenge. Are things any better? The brick and mortar mm. and the online, you know, mm. you see how uh, uh, different new businesses are sort of uh, moving ahead. Mm. I would say simply put, uh, a single window, presenceless. Mm. These are words that the government can bring in. Mm. And, and uh, one simple ask is, uh, well, if you really need help, ask us. Mm. We would be more than glad to sort of help you with that. Mm. Uh, single window today is is not a very very big thing. A lot of private companies do it, mm. and so why can't the government do it? Mm. Ask us. And mm. We will be glad to help, kind of thing. That's the big challenge. What big about challenge. you, Minal? How do you see this? The fact that we just can't seem to be able to crack this ease of doing business. The the global stats also tell us how poorly we are faring on this. Um, you know, I think. Um, uh, you know, the visions have been laid out by the government in the past by different people, but I don't think it's become... I think it's more walking the talk, right? Yeah, I, I don't think it's programmatic. So mm. to your point, mm. it's, not, it's not yet walking the talk, right? Mm. I think if, if uh, you, you know, it, the, the intent needs to be converted on the ground to, mm. to action, that's not happened yet. 